Bonnie Perk would like to know why the people who this affects don't simply use the family restroom. Walmart has a family restroom. Yeah, you know, I think in general, thanks, Bonnie. Um, I think in general, um, so in Washington, D.C., where we are here, and in I think six other big cities and the entire state of California, any single use restroom has to be gender neutral. And this is a really good idea. You know, the Starbucks in Washington, D.C., just one thing I'm overly familiar with, um, there were 52 Starbucks when this law was implemented about six years ago. Uh, in DC and they all had one single-use men's room and one single-use women's room. Now they each have two gender-neutral single-use restrooms. This is going to be shocking for your or your viewers but my bathroom at home is gender-neutral. You know if there's one toilet in the room why not make it gender-neutral? It's, it's helpful for trans people. It's also helpful for gender non-conforming people who aren't trans. It's also helpful for parents who might have a child with them. It's helpful for seniors who might have to have a, a caregiver with them or somebody with certain disabilities who may have to have a caregiver with them. It's a good idea to have as many gender neutral bathrooms as possible. Now, when a trans person's using those, they are taking that from somebody else who might need it. So for me, the right choice is the women's room. Um, and in schools too often, the only gender neutral restroom is a restroom that none of the other kids are allowed to do. So what the school would be saying is, hey, Ryan, you're different than everybody else. Hey, all you kids, Ryan is different than everybody else. So Ryan, we can't trust Ryan in the bathroom. So we're going to put Ryan down in the bathroom in the nurse's station. It's stigmatizing. It's separate and unequal. Um, and it's bad. Also, I think George Takai or somebody said this on Twitter today, and I'm sure it's been said before, this isn't about bathrooms just like it was never about water fountains. This is about moving about in society as a full person. Um, uh, you know, if you cannot use the right bathroom at school, you simply can't be a student. If, if I can't use the bathroom here at work, I can't have a job. And, you know, when a student can't go to school, that impacts them economically for the rest of their life, it impacts their health, it impacts their relationships. Um, it is not the kind of world we want where certain kids can't go to school because of something as simple as other people's prejudices. Do you have a sense of how this will unfold uh, college by college and state by state? Like you said, the guidance was issued, but colleges still are able to make their own decisions. This, this does not require them to make bad decisions in the way that the high school uh, that you just talked about um, did. Well, by the way, K through 12 schools also do not have to do anything bad right. because of this. We're just afraid they might think they're supposed right. to, and we're seeing that some of them, some of them will. Uh, I don't know. If I were a college right now, I would not want to mess with the trans students over this issue. Um, you know, college students now are uh, on fire. They are standing up for themselves, and it's the trans students and every other student. And one of the positive things that Donald Trump has unleashed, if, if not the only positive thing, is the solidarity between these movements. You know, I know he has scared trans children this week, but I know he scared immigrant children last week. I know he scared refugee children the week before that. So I want to stand up for refugee kids and immigrant kids and, and all of the adults who are worried now about what's happening. And on college campuses, that's a given. If a college backtracks on this, not only are they via in violation of the law, and by the way, almost all colleges now have Title IX offices that just work to make sure Title IX is being enforced on campus. Uh, but if they don't, uh, I mean, you know, us threatening school districts with lawsuits is maybe effective. Colleges are just going to inflame their students if they don't do this right. Um, and, you know, I'd encourage students to watch and see what their schools are doing. Ashley Blankenship uh, is concerned about violence in and around restrooms. Um, she says that 70 percent of transgender students feel unsafe, unhappy face. This is the interesting thing is that when we were reporting in North Carolina, violence in restrooms was the reason that uh, the conservatives gave for wanting to implement HB2. Yeah. Well, we've put together an exhaustive list of all of the cases of transgender people committing violence in the restrooms. There are zero cases. Um, it just, it simply doesn't. Can we run through that? No, yeah. Every single I mean, one really, I, there, yeah. I can name every one of the perpetrators. It doesn't yeah. happen. Also, what, what is never pointed out, and then it's already a crime yeah. to that's assault right. somebody or to yeah. batter somebody. Yeah. Like, that's a crime. That's correct. So. That's correct. 
They, what if they go in there and rape somebody? Well, rape is a crime as far as I know in North Carolina and around the country. Exactly. Sorry. So what they think, what, what they try to claim when you really have a long conversation is, yes, but a rapist who might not otherwise have the guts to rape would be willing to say, I'm actually a woman. I will, and it just doesn't make any sense. It is just politicians scaring people. So, you know, our organization just did this um, United States Trans Survey, which is at USTransSurvey.org. And some of the, it, it, it's, it's just heartbreaking. We interviewed 28,000 um, transgender people. And, and this information I'm going to give you is pre-North Carolina passing HB2. So this is from late 2015. Um, so we're sure it must be worse by now. And we didn't interview, interview all trans people. We think we interviewed about one out of every 50 trans people. So we're talking about tens of thousands of physical assaults, shovings, everything from shovings to punching to, um, you know, worse things. 60% of people had avoided using public restroom so that they would avoid any kind of harassment. This is particularly dangerous for students. But we don't want them to have to not go to the bathroom. Um, and 32% had limited the amount they ate or drank at some point during the last year to, so, to, uh, avoid, so they didn't have to use the restroom. And 8% of our sample had reported urinary tract infection, kidney infection, or other kidney-related problem in the last year because they had not used the bathroom sufficiently. For me to walk into a female restroom at this time, which HP2 forces me by law to go into the women's restroom, I've been using the men's restroom for the last 10 years of my life with no issue. And now I'm looking over my shoulder. I'm worried about my safety. How would it put you in danger if you were to go into a public men's room? I'm a woman. I, that puts me in danger from men who may mistake that as an invitation sexually. And I'm not going to put myself in that position. That is physically endangering my life and my well-being. I had one issue with the bathroom before I transitioned, using the female bathroom and looking like a young teenage boy and a woman getting upset, calling for her boyfriend, getting drug out of the bathroom. Luckily, the situation was uh, diffused. He didn't beat me up. He just threw me to the ground, and that was it. But That's violent enough. Yeah, that is. I mean, that's, you know, that's too much right there. I mean, which bathroom do I pick? Do I pick the one that I will get maybe get arrested to go in or the one that I could get beaten and possibly even killed going into? And I remember hiding in a stall, locking the door, and having people screaming, hey, we got a faggot in the bathroom. And then we have so many people starting to fill up the bathroom. It, it, I, it, they get assaulted. Um, they get assaulted all the time. They get the police called on them all the time. Um, I know a lot of trans women who never, ever, ever talk in the restroom. But people, are, people really are being assaulted. We had, um, shortly after HB2 passed in North Carolina, we had a security guard um, just about a half a mile from here at a food store, uh, wrestle some woman to the ground and seriously injure her and then arrest her. Um, now, she wasn't held much because the store realized they were going to, you know, face a lawsuit, but um, that kind of harassment is happening.